So of course we have Benz Antoine, we have Anjali Bomani, I'm gonna butcher some of these names, Carolina Ravasa and Chloe Hollings. Well, good morning, guys. Uh, well, I guess it's afternoon hi. now. I always say good morning. I feel like it's always morning. Because you wake up at noon. That would be a good reason. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. Well, I mean, so what we're going to be doing, guys, is I've got some questions ready. We're going to talk. We have some cool stuff planned out. I had some cool ideas. I think you guys are going to have some fun with it. If you guys have questions, we have that microphone right up in the middle. Just make a line. We will make sure we get to you as soon as we can. We've got, what, just about, I don't know what time we're at. See 132. here, 136, you're a little off. So we've got just about a half hour, just a little over a half hour. So let's start, you know? You guys wanna say hello? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Greetings. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our reality. <laughs> ah, see, that's a good start right there. That's a good start. Do this and pass it along. Hand it back and forth, that's fine, yeah, yeah. that's fine, yeah. Hi. We're voice actors. We don't know how to use microphones properly. We're terrible. I feel like if you didn't, that would really hinder your job. Mm. Well, sometimes it does. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I don't know. Where am I going to start? I, I, I took notes in orders of your booths. So, we're just going to start in order of your booth here. So, Ben, <laughs> I'm going to start with you. So that was the first picture I took. Whoa. Oh. Hello. See, Hello. there we go. Don't worry about it. I'm used to going first because with the name Antoine, you're always first. Since I was a little kid, I was always first, so I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, that's not bad. I mean... Okay, and again, if you guys have questions, go ahead, line up. I'll get your questions in between my questions. That's fine. Uh, so, Benz, you've got quite an interesting history. I, I like to talk about a lot of stuff. Obviously, Baptiste, right? Everyone knows him as Baptiste. But the, it's the past that's really interesting to me. I was kind of doing some research and noticed you had some roles in some really interesting movies. Are you doing the research now or you did it before? <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not telling you what I have up on here. No, it's notes. I did my research, don't you worry. So I, I, the big three that I picked out, you were in Death Race, very interesting action movie. Get Rich or Die Trying, 50 Cent's movie. Uh, and then Romeo Must Die, which I don't know if you guys know, Jet Li is pretty cool, one of my favorites. I Does mean, anybody in here even know those movies? That's, that is my question. <laughs> there we go, see? Okay. The, all right, we got some love, all right, all right. So, I mean, let's start at the beginning. Romeo Must Die, Aaliyah, Jet Li, you know? What, right, what? I'm, I'm Give me some memory, question. give me something. Oh, I, I gotta generate everything, okay. <laughs> Um, well, Romeo Must Die uh, was uh, my first time in a big feature film with uh, three cameras set up, and um, it was an exciting role. It was a very short role, but I fought for it. I got it, and I'm very proud of it. So I want some love. I want some applause. There we go. So how does voice acting differ from being in a movie like that? You know, that's your first experience. How is it different doing something like this where, you know, they want you to be a character in a video game? Um, well, I mean, being on a film, of course, is, is, is your physicality, it's your face, it's your body, um, as well as your voice, so that's, that's definitely different. Um, but at the same time, when you're doing um, a voice, you also have to channel all of that and put it all in the voice. And I know these beautiful ladies have a lot more experience uh, than I do at that, so that was my challenge. You know, when I got in the booth on the first day, um, the people in LA were like, what's that noise in the background? Because every, every line I was saying, I was living it, I was doing it and they were like and they didn't know and they were like what, what's up what's that noise and then the guy was like stop moving <laughs> <laughs> so so I had to learn pretty quick I'm like okay let me I need to bring that energy but I can't I can't move around like I would uh, um, you know on on screen so that was a big adjustment for me trying to trying to uh, to bring that same energy Brian the same vibe but without moving as much okay okay uh, let's move over. We'll talk about some older movies. Let's move on to you, Anjali. Okay, Anjali. Anjali I said that wrong out there too. Okay. Anjali. Okay. So, I I read a fun fact. I, I don't always trust IMDb. Okay. But I read a really interesting fact, and if so, I think it's a big deal. It is a big deal. That you were born in Cleveland. I was yeah. born in Cleveland. What? what? Yeah. Oh, there we go. I am a real Cleveland Indian. They have heard that all weekend, and they will continue to hear it forever. So what's it like being home? 
Well, in fairness, I was born here, but I was raised in Southern California. Yep. So what I remember is my, my actual house, because we moved right before I turned four. But it was 2225 Nelson Park Lane. Have you like gone by it at all since you've been here? No. No? We have, as soon as we left the hotel last night, we decided that was a terrible idea because of the cold. Oh, um, that's fair. So yeah. uh, I don't think that we're going to be venturing back there. But I do have some family who are still out here. So they're going to come tomorrow and check out the convention, which will be really, really fun. That's yeah. It's really cool. Really yeah. cool. Well, glad to have you back here in Cleveland. I'm not a Clevelandite, but... I'm glad to have you here because I'm Thank here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, same kind of thing, looking at some of the older stuff here, because you guys are going to talk about Overwatch all weekend, right? Correct. So we want to try to do something a little different here. So I was looking at some of the stuff that you've done. So Broadway, mm -hmm. uh, it was Bombay Dreams. Bombay Dreams and a show called Metamorphoses, yeah. Okay. And I heard that w one of the things I read was that it was your role as Ronnie in mm -hmm. Bombay Dreams kind of really helped launch things, get things going. Interesting. Uh... I don't know that I would necessarily see it that way. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know what the question is. Well, more so, it, it, would you credit that to where it, or what would you credit to what, you know, what was your big Honestly, role Meta took Metamorphoses was the first thing, uh, because Metamorphoses, it was very, very well received on Broadway. It won the Tony for Best Director, it was nominated for Best Play, um, and it happened, it was a, it was a difficult time, because it was, we, we started the run right, right around 9-11, so it was a, a, a time where everybody really needed some healing and everybody, just like Genji, um, everybody, you know, everybody was looking for, for something to get, provide them solace, but not just in an entertainment sort of way. That was available, obviously, with, with the producers and, and other shows. And this show is all about the, um, the, the power of love to change and the power of of love to heal and there were there are all of these Greek myths in it that spoke to everyone on a very deep level and it was set in a pool of water so the whole set was a pool. How um, long did you have to be in water? I was in and out the whole show. Did you just yes. turn into like a wrinkly mess? No. no? no Does she look wrinkly? I mean, well, come I'm on. not saying you're wrinkly in general. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> how do you girl. stay in a pool for That's a whole play? My girl. Um, no, there are definitely challenges to it, but uh, which really uh, you learn. But no, I mean it was we 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 did okay. We huh. did okay. okay. I mean I'm 112 and I still look like this. So. 112. That's right, brown don't frown. Oh, I love that you're uh, you're clapping for that. Wait, thank you. <laughs> Applause for skincare. Yay! <laughs> Use your sunscreen, SPF 900. Um, so yeah, I feel like that that was the big one. And then and then Bombay Dreams was was really fun because it was an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical and it was big and splashy and Bollywood and your huge costumes and all sorts of crazy stuff. So it was a very different show. It was a very very different show. Um, so how do you go from Broadway to? coming to, to being in Overwatch. How does that transition? Well, it's, it wasn't a single transition. Well, it was yeah. many, many things because I, I did Broadway and then I started doing TV and mostly doing TV and did opera and all sorts of stuff. So it, it's not so much a transition as another branch of the acting tree that just kind of opened up. And uh, a theater background, uh, which most of us have, a theater background is actually fantastic for voice acting because you do spend so much time developing your voice when you are when you are preparing for the stage. You spend so much time taking voice classes and learning how to uh, express yourself vocally. And so uh, in that sense, it's it's probably even more similar than the film and TV work that we've done um, because you do have that ability to change your vocal production. Uh, and you also know how to do eight shows a week without losing your voice, which comes in handy when you are in a booth and doing 19,000 death sounds. <laughs> you know, you don't, that, that's probably the most physically challenging thing that we have to face in the booth is like, now die because you're freezing. Okay, now die because you've fallen off a cliff, but you hit something on the way down. Now don't lose your voice while you're doing that for half an hour. So that, that is actually a very, that's, a, that's been a big boon from the theater background. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, Carolina, your turn. Caroline. I knew that. I did it again. Right, hello, 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 hello. Hello. Oh, Are y'all getting freaked out because like that little microphone is giving you an echo of what we're saying? Is that weirding you out? I'm hearing it. Do you hear it? I'm not oh. It. Okay. Where I'm I'm sitting, I hear an echo oh, of something, and it's like like a little Anjali was talking back there. It's really weird. That's because I am. Okay. <laughs> hearing things. Maybe. I wonder what's 
Can good. Tighten your mic, maybe. No, no, it's 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 me hearing it. It's not the mic. It's okay. I thought. It, anyway, I'm hoping not. It's fine. So, you, your your uh, your research was very tough, actually. There wasn't a lot that That's I could find. That's because she's so yeah. She's hidden everything. Okay, yeah, well, exactly. So one of the big things I wanted to know is... I use private browsers. Mm, incognito mode only. Yes. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So one of the coolest things I wanted to talk about with you was being a part of Sombra's reveal in general. Because mm. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think it was one of the coolest reveals of a character of all time. Who watched it? Yeah, I mean, the ones who didn't go home. <laughs> <laughs> was anybody actually in the Discord trying to answer the riddles and everything? No? Yeah, see, there we go. I got at least one. Yep. Uh-huh. I remember that. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, did you, did you know, like, how they were going to do this or anything like that? Dude, I didn't know anything. Nothing. Nothing. I basically asked if I should go to BlizzCon to see what the whole thing was about because I didn't realize that it, I knew they were going to launch it, but I didn't realize they'd been doing the ARG for eight months. Uh, when somebody asked me, did you know about the ARG? I'm like, the AR who? Like, I didn't know what anything was. So when I come up on the screen, I'm sitting in the audience like everybody else with my buddy and then a glitch in the system happens and everything goes dark. And I said, oh, I think this is me, but I didn't know. And then the short film starts and I don't know, 20,000 people that are there start screaming and I'm like, (gasps) and then, and then I was told that a bunch of other people online were watching it and I thought, oh my God, this is nuts. Like I, it was, it was exciting and scary at the same time because I didn't know, hello, that that was going to be the, sorry to keep you up over there, um, that that was it. So yeah, it was, it took me by surprise. I really didn't know that it was going to be huge. So you didn't see any of the reveal before, so everything was fresh to you. So everything. Just also, big freak out. when we work on video games, they always give us a code name, and the, and our character has a code name, and we don't know what it is, I guess, till it comes out. So I knew they'd said, "Oh, Overwatch already exists," but I didn't even Google Overwatch because I thought that's a code name. Nothing's gonna appear. Like that's how much I didn't care to know about it. Cause like you get all excited about something, and then it tanks or it doesn't do well, and so I'm like, "This is a voice I'm doing. If it." If it does well, great, but I wasn't getting my hopes up, you know? And then when I was there, I was like, oh, this is something big. So I was going through, and you guys all won an award, a BTV award for Mm -hmm. the uh, vocal work you did. Um, One of the interesting ones, you won the longest named award I have ever read. Me? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what that is. Best female vocal performance in a video game in a support role. I won that? You won that, according to IMDb, yeah. We're so proud of you. <laughs> there we go. Um, I would like to thank. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I didn't know that, dude. Thank you. Right, there we go. I'm glad I could what? help. That's yeah. a BT. BT something. I'd have to look at. I knew we won an ensemble thing because Tracer was nominated. I knew that. I did not know. I. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. I'm glad I could give you that. Yeah. Man. There you go. All right. Chloe. Yes. We'll do the same thing here. So yours Hello. was really interesting, too. I, I loved... So f- my first question to you was, you have a very nice website. Oh, thank yeah. you. I made it myself. But it That's says how that, I stalked you. It <laughs> says your book comes out in 2016. Uh, it has, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. in the past, uh, I believe. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I should review that. I was wondering, I maybe. <laughs> yeah. So French-Australian... French, Australian, that is and British. Very interesting combination. So right. you were born in Paris. I was. Moved to Melbourne. Yes. How is that different? I mean, it's got to be. How is that different? Yeah, I'm sure they're, well, besides being many moons apart, but. Um, so how do I want to answer that question? Well, it's different for, for several reasons, and it's different depending, like, the, the impact that it had on me um, also depends on the age that I was. I was four. Mm-hmm. So when you're four and basically your whole life has just been, like, being in France and, like, in Paris where, you know, there's a certain type of weather, <laughs> I guess moving to Australia was moving to another planet for me back then because I had to learn this new language very, very fast in order to survive and um, and you know suddenly it was just like beaches and sunshine and basically like moving to LA now <laughs> right 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 yeah and so you're back in Paris now is that what no and now? then when I was seven I moved back to France because so my dad is French and my mom is Australian and um, I lived in Paris ever since until last August 
when I came to get closer to these gals and move to LA. Okay, okay. So one of the things I read is that you've been doing advertisements and things for mm-hmm. 20 years, I believe is what I read, mm-hmm. which would be 24 now because your website's kind of outdated, right? Uh, that completely, yeah, <laughs> completely. Um, have you, do you have any advertisement that sticks out in your head that you just never forget? Honestly? <laughs> Um, that I would never that forget? That you never forget. Because there's I a mean, second part of this question. So I've been doing voice work for a really long time. And so since I was a kid, so I've done a, a lot of stuff. But because I was an English speaker in a French country, I was doing a lot of things that weren't necessarily ad. A little lo- but I did a lot of L'Oreal for the UK, a lot of um, Hewlett Packard for the US, and Lexus. How do you properly say those Brands, though, in French. L'Oréal. Mm. Parce que je le veux bien. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been like all sorts of things. Schweppes and... And I don't know. I, I... Is there any that you just can't forget? That are just ingrained in your brain? Not really. No? Because... Well, just because... I enjoy that work, but I also enjoy it because it's the way I get to do the work that matters to me, mm-hmm. which is the theater work that I do, which is writing the writing that I do, which is all these things. So I love doing it, and I also love that it's only this kind of um, accessory part of my of my life and, and my livelihood. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, is there anything you've done that you just wish people will never see? Oh! Well, uh, I probably. say this only because I don't know. I'm sure a lot of you are League of Legends fans, and recently there was a, a host who finally said, "I don't want any of you to see this commercial, so I'm going to release the commercial." It was something she'd done right. in her past. Right. Well, yeah. the, the the sorry, I'm lucky in a way because I've only done voice in commercial work. Okay. I haven't been on them, so I feel kind of protected <laughs> from uh, all of that. I've definitely shot a few French stuff that I wouldn't want anyone to see, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> no, that's all right. We'll leave that one we alone. We can talk about yeah. the stuff I do want people to see. Please. If you want. Yeah, no, please. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no. I was kidding, but yeah. All right. Just there we go. Tip. We have a question. Oh, yeah. There you go. They're taking over. First victim. <laughs> She's said enough. I'm going to just step in now. <laughs> so I have two questions. First one is, we're all fans of various different things here. What is what is your guys' like, biggest fandoms? Hmm. I mean, when it was around Game of Thrones, uh, much to her chagrin, because I she got the Nini Nini song all over the world from me, and I love The Expanse, huge 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 fan of Expanse, um, uh, Star Trek. Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, lots of Star Trek, <laughs> Picard, Star Trek, St- Next Generation, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> Me? Uh, well, okay. Um, I'm gonna go with friends. I'm very nerdy with friends. I know it's and like yeah, I, I can't help it. That's that's what it is. I love it. Pivot. Pivot. No. Yeah. Come on, people. Um, Disney. I watched all the Disney movies as a kid, and I am a fan of all the little sidekicks that the stupid princesses have. <laughs> Ta da! That's why she got me. She's the, she's the princess, and I'm the sidekick. Me. I'm a warrior, not a princess. You're a warrior princess, Thank like you. Xena. Okay. Well, okay. Right? You can be both. Um, what are you a fan of? What are you a fan of? If, you, if you're a big fan of any particular thing in the world. Star Wars. I got the Law and order. Law and order. Bum, bum. Where's the out you? Well, I want to ask you, did you see episode seven of season four of The Expanse? <laughs> episode seven. Uh, oh! 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 Because oh, 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 oh. I haven't caught up. You in it? But we have yeah. a mutual friend on it, too. <laughs> I'm a fan of, of, of everything that is great work that people believe in and put their passion behind. That's my answer for, uh, for what I'm a fan of, because there's too many to mention. Yeah. Well done. We Usually the applause comes in at that point. Just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have some fun stuff I want to do. Uh, 
And I think we're getting to that point now. So we talked about this a little up back. So I asked these guys a really important question. Oh, he's got Oh, we have one more? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, bud. It's more so a request uh, for Chloe. Can you do your favorite, w your favorite widow line? Oh, right. My favorite widow line? <clears throat> Emotions make you vulnerable. Ooh. There we go. There we go. Thank you. All right. So what I did out back was I asked these guys to pick a song. Well, except for Ben's because I chose his song. But I asked these guys to pick a song. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the lyrics and I'm going to have them read a little bit of the lyrics as their Overwatch character. Okay. 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 So you don't seem excited. <laughs> you don't seem awake. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> Having that post lunch, like, mm. yeah, I'm just gonna go to that panel, yep. take a nap. Carb comas, <laughs> I get you. All right, so here we go, Ben. I'm gonna come over here. Uh -oh. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Just, just use this one. And that one around? Perfect. I hacked it. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I don't. None of these people will even know this song. They're gonna know the song. They know this song. They know, oh, I'm they'll sure. know the chorus. Yep. So really? Let's start with the chorus. All right. So let's so let's try that out. Let's see before before I perform and put my heart into this. <laughs> let me see if they even know a little bit of what the chorus would be of this song. It's a rap song, so I'm gonna put them in context, and I'm gonna sing the first part of the chorus, and you guys finish it. It's a simple line. Here we go. Mama said. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> this is America. Um, so now I got to read a little lyric from here, okay? I don't know if I even, I think I might need glasses now because I didn't realize this. All right, uh, I should make it bigger probably. Don't, don't, here we go. Are you doing the first part? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so Baptiste. <clears throat> Do I have to say it or rap it? You can just say it. Oh, okay. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking the piers, putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering, over the competition, I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop. These lyrics that'll make you call the cops. I'm gonna knock you out. <laughs> It was hard because all I kept hearing is LL's voice, and I'm like, man, don't butcher this. <laughs> all right. I think I, under, I underestimated you guys, because I'm like, they're not going to know this. We're going to pimp him out, too. He's got a rap video on the YouTube. Um, on the YouTube? He was rapping when he was uh, 19 years old, and it's a really awesome video shot in Miami. Forget what it's called, but if you look up my videos I've done with this guy, I, I link, I put the link there um, to it. What's it called, Mr. Josh? The Freshman. The Freshman. Google that, and you will find him. Shirtless. You will not. Rapping. You will not be sad. You will thank her. All right, so this next one, this is uh, the Symmetra song, okay? Right. The Symmetra song. Yeah. Right. So this also I felt like people may not really know um, because it's an oldie but goodie. So I... I you better check them out first. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're no good. You know that song? Heartbreaker. You guys know that? You're a liar and you're a cheat. That, yeah, anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> are we awake? Are we... Do we know where we are? <laughs> Is anybody out there? Indiana! <laughs> All right. Uh, pick a pick, pick a pick a pick a pick a pick a spot. Pick somewhere for me to start. Where should Auntie? No, no, no. Just pick a spot. Tell me where to start. Direct me. All right. I guess I'm uptight and I'm stuck like glue. Cause I ain't never. I ain't never. I ain't never. No, no. Loved a man the way that I. I love you.
I've never heard Symmetra speak in contractions or with double negatives. It's pretty, and, I ain't, uh, that, I ain't yeah. never, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that no, no. Is like, that sounds like one of my aunties trying to read. I ain't never, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not how, I ain't never, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop talking. Okay. So now, Sombra. This was your song. This was your choice. Hello, hello. This microphone is, uh, I keep hacking Can it. Can I use mine? Mine's pretty good. Uh, Y'all know Dave Bowie. Rebel, rebel, you've torn your dress. Rebel, rebel, your face is a mess. Rebel, rebel, how could they know? Hot Trump, I love you so. Don't ya do, 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 do. Okay. This, this is a lot more fun. I'm having fun with this, honestly. <laughs> so, <Someone is. laughs> the the last one here for Widowmaker, mm-hmm. you actually did, we, did you hear what song I chose for you? Because you just no. said the artist. Oh, really? Yeah. So I decided I'm gonna do this song just because everyone should get into this one. Okay. Let's see. I'm. A, what's this gonna be? Ooh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, ooh, whoa, that's cool for Widowmaker. Okay. Widowmaker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mama just killed a man, put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger. Now he's dead. Mama, life had just begun. But now I'm gone and thrown it all away. That's it, right? That was enjoyable. <laughs> that was great. That was really, no, all of you were really good on that. That was a lot of fun. A lot. Again, guys, if you have questions, we're running out of time here. Don't fight. There we go. Yes, please, Perfect. Please ask right. questions. Uh, so uh, when they presented the characters to you with Blizzard, how much of it was them bringing you like a complete Bible for the character yeah. and you working your way through it, like finding the character amongst what they've already written? Because I know there's a lot of material around Overwatch. Uh, I guess it depends at what point uh, in the game we arrived. Uh, when I was auditioned for Widowmaker, it was um, for the for the animation. The game was just about to come out, like a few months later, and so I knew quite a bit. I actually uh, could. I had drawings of Widowmaker, like I had a lot of support, and um, so that was yeah, that was. <laughs> so it was it was. Good, and then I guess it was just a lot of teamwork. Um, yeah, that's kind of generic. Uh, no, no, that that's actually interesting because I didn't know that that's that's when you joined the fray. Um, I did not have a lot of information because I came in pretty early on. I didn't know what she looked like. Um, uh, and uh, so, so there was just kind of like a blurb about, there was the same audition blurb about kind of her background and how she order above all things and elegance and, you know, so, so in terms of what I brought to it, I just made her sound like every disapproving Indian auntie I've ever had. <laughs> and my very elegant cousin and combined the two. Um, and then as time went on, I learned more and more about her. And like, and, and they didn't mention anything about her being on the spectrum at all. I found out when, when the world found out, which I thought was really fantastic because it was, no, it was not a defining characteristic of who she was. It was just a part of who she was, which all of us real people, that's the case. There's no one thing that defines you, so I thought that was really, really special, but it developed through through time. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I mean, uh, uh, they tried to show me a bunch of stuff and tell me a bunch of stuff, but honestly, I didn't listen. I didn't even look at it. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why, <laughs> Anjali's like, oh. Anjali's like, oh. <laughs> I love your answer so much. 
No, because I didn't know. Because the thing is, once I started looking at him, I was like, I was trying to analyze his look, and I'm like, I don't look like him. He looks funny. I don't, I don't know. So it just started to confuse me, which is not very hard to do. <laughs> so I just didn't use it at all. There you go. I'm confused. <laughs> so um, yeah, just because of my background and everything, I just said, listen, I just, I don't need any of that. Just, just show me the lines. And then with um, um, with Andrea, who was uh, who was my, uh, she was my rock in the process because I had to trust the, you know, whatever she was saying. So for me, I just focused on that. I didn't really focus on any drawings, any whatever they were trying to tell me, some origin stuff. I'm like, whatever, just, just show me the lines. And uh, that, But that's just my process. It might not be f for everyone. And I'm sure everybody has a different experience, but I just like to keep it simple. I tell my friends all the time, I only have a one gig hard drive up here. <laughs> so I only use what's necessary for the next 15, 20 minutes and then everything else I don't need. So so I don't, I don't dig too deep into it. <laughs> Applause is necessary. <laughs> he doesn't respond to group texts because it's too much. <sighs> um, Sombra. I had a picture of her once we once I booked her, but when we auditioned, I don't think we had any images when we auditioned. Um, for the most part, they've created these characters and they've written all the lines and they have a very clear idea. Michael Chu, our writer, is so brilliant. He just he has it all ready to go. Of course, we bring it to life with our voice, and they guide it and help us find. Oh, that 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 voice, that line could be a little more sarcastic, a little more spiky, a little more comedic, whatever. But I think that for the most part, they have it pretty figured out. And now that we are our characters, every time we go in and re-record new stuff for the downloadable content, um, you know, I think that we have a better grasp of who they are now. So we don't have to fiddle so much, but it's still fun to, you know, get directed and, and go deeper. Yeah. Very cool. All right, we're running very close on time here. So I have about. Yeah, do we need to be quick with our questions, guys. Hi. As uh, somebody who's trying to get into voice acting himself and doing a lot of voice lines just under his loft bed with a professional microphone and stuff like that, how do I go from where I'm at to where you guys are at? Go! Okay. Website. There is a website all of you should take down. It is called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. It is by, uh, it was created by Dee Bradley Baker, who is the voice of a gazillion creatures and people all over the world. Also, our beloved Hammond in, uh, in Overwatch. And it's a fantastic resource because he has both practical and personal resources uh, that he offers in there. And that, that will fill you with much more information than we could in the time of this panel. Also, Crispin Freeman has a website um, and a podcast that you can listen to called Voice Acting Mastery, which is great to get people's stories. Um, he's, our uh, Winston. he's our Winston, if you, if you all if you don't know that. Um, but that's honestly, that's better than anything that we could say uh, up here. Check that out. It has a ton of information there. Thank you Keep so practicing. much. Thank you. Yes. And I playing. Will. Play, play. All play right. Hi. So one of your co, oh, sorry. Uh, one of your coworkers, Matthew Mercer, is kind of known for playing Overwatch and like using his voice lines to play with uh, like other players. Have you guys ever done that before? I'm so bad at it, I can't. We I can't multitask That's a good to play and troll people. <laughs> we're, really, we're really bad at it. Because I fall off cliffs a lot, so yeah. I've just tried to survive in yeah. game. I can't yeah. really try and do the voice. I stay off voice chat because I don't want people to lose respect for me and find out that it's actually me playing that badly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bad, that's very bad. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite animation series? And if you had the opportunity, which character would you voice from it? Oh my God. Mm. I immediately go to South Park, but I would voice just any any of them. That's one of my favorite. Um, oh, I think that's my mother-in-law FaceTiming me. You guys, it's yeah. my mother-in-law's birthday. Can we sing her happy birthday? Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, here she comes. Okay. Hi, hi, hang on a second. We're, uh, we're in Cleveland, Ohio. And um, some people want to sing you happy birthday. Are you ready? Are you ready? OK. Here we go, everybody. Ready? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Call her Mama Sita. Happy birthday, Mama Sita. Happy birthday to you. Guys, thank you. I will call you. I'll call you back when we're on a break. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Mama Sita. She's not being. I love you. Bye. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. I'm not giving her grandchildren.
Ireland, so that's good. <laughs> I'm off the hook. <laughs> Favorite animated series. Oh yeah. Them. Oh right. <laughs> um, Got distracted. I want to think Disney for you. I feel yeah, like. I want to be like Timon or those guys in a future animation. Zazu. Oh, fully Hispanic because we need to represent, right? Right. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. I want to be an Indian squirrel. Yep. I want to be an Indian chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well. <laughs> All right, hit us, Clayton. Clayton. To ask the typical Overwatch question, what is your favorite character interaction from the game? Oh. And it can, it can either be between you guys or whatever characters you like, depending. I think I just like the really. Okay. I must admit, I have a lot of fun playing a very evil character. <laughs> so I take a lot of pleasure when um, Widowmaker is being very um, terrible to like Anna and Farah. What did she say? <laughs> and I think, so you guys can help me with this. Isn't this this thing like, when she says like uh, something about the eye or like, because do you guys know that Widowmaker took out Anna's eye? Mm -hmm. And then she says something to Farah, who's Anna's daughter. And she tells her, like, I don't know. Does, can someone help me out it's, here? Uh, mother like daughter. Like mother like daughter. And but I think there's another like more cruel one. But yeah, those are the ones that I really like. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not like that in real life. Just <laughs> just as an actress. But it wouldn't be fun if you were like that in real life. It's more fun <laughs> to be what you're not. Oh no, yeah, completely. So I. Hello. Hello. The <laughs> microphone is kidding me. Um, I don't do musicals. So I. I have a voice line with Hammond, and I say to him, you remind me of my teddy bear, Arturito. And he goes, <laughs> and then I respond, but he's way cuter. And I named the teddy bear Arturito, and Michael Chu ran with it because, anyone speak Spanish in the house? Okay. All Latinos on the planet think that R2-D2 in Star Wars is called Arturito, and it's been mis mispronounced by Americans. They don't realize it's R2-D2, which is like letters and numbers. So Arturito as in little Arthur. Um, and so I was like, we should name it that. And it's Michael, instead of just going, okay, my teddy bear's name is Arturito because of Star Wars, he kind of slips it in really carefully. And I appreciate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, Michael Chu slipped it in. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you want to answer? What? Oh gosh, um, gosh, all of my uh, 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 in-game interactions are so shady. Um, here's the problem: uh, we record a lot of lines all at once. And we don't necessarily know which ones have made it into the game and have not. And I can't recall if some of my favorites have actually made it in yet, but they might eventually. So I don't want to blow it uh. by telling you what I said in my session. And, uh, and like, you know, oh my god, we just got new Overwatch lore, and then I'm out of a job. <laughs> so, um, I know there's some sass she gives Lucio, but I don't know that it's like the, the high grade sass that I'm thinking of right now that she gives someone. Say, oh, let's break oh. it down in Symmetra's world. Oh, mm. let's break it down. <laughs> I remembered one that I like. I think it's for, I can't remember who, not bad for second best. <laughs> who does she say that to? I think she says that to. Like our sassy, li our sassy lines. Yeah. I want us to have a girl group, the three of us, called the Queens of Shade, because we have so many Ooh. shady moments. It's I mean, good. My name is Shade, dude. <laughs> That's true. Shadow, shad, shad, sh sh Shade. I'm call you Shade. <laughs> Shade. Well, that Sombra means Shade, <laughs> is what I'm letting you know. <laughs> that brings us pretty much right to our time. Do you guys have any last things you'd like to say? Oh, we'll be here all weekend. Come visit us at our booth. Yeah. Come say friends. hi. Bring your friends. We don't We're around. We, unless you're Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes we do. Yeah. Sometimes we buy. Well, guys, let's give a huge round of applause. Come on. Thank you guys for coming a whole bunch. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>